Spread love, man. What's up, beautiful souls? How you doing today? I hope all is well. Today's topic is the power of attention. I'm also going to insert a few audio samples of Neville Goddard talking about the subject. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your opinion and what did you put your attention on today. Let me know. Enjoy. Attention. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. James 1.8 Attention is forceful in proportion to the narrowness of its focus. That is, when it is obsessed with a single idea or sensation. It is steadied and powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see one thing only, for you steady the attention and increase its power by confining it. The desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated, for an idea is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. Concentrated observation is the attentive attitude directed from some specific end. The attentive attitude involves selection, for when you pay attention, it signifies that you have decided to focus your attention on one object or state rather than on another. Therefore, when you know what you want, you must deliberately focus your attention on the feeling of your wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds all other ideas out of consciousness. The power of attention is the measure of your inner force. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out other things and causes them to disappear. The great secret of success is to focus the attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled without permitting any distraction. All progress depends upon an increase of attention. The ideas which impel you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention. The idea which excludes all others from the field of attention discharges in action. This one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, I press toward the mark. Philippians 3, 13, 14. This means you, this one thing you can do, forgetting those things that are behind, you can press toward the mark of filling your mind with the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To the unenlightened man, this will seem to be all fantasy. Yet all progress comes from those who do not take the accepted view, nor accept the world as it is. As was stated heretofore, if you can imagine what you please, and if the forms of your thought are as vivid as the forms of nature, you are, by virtue of the power of your imagination, master of your fate. Your imagination is you, yourself, and the world. As your imagination sees it is the real world. When you set out to master the movements of attention, which must be done if you would successfully alter the course of observed events, it is then you realize how little control you exercise over your imagination and how much it is dominated by sensory impressions and by drifting on the tides of idle moods. Concentrated observation is the attentive attitude directed from some specific end. The power of attention is the measure of your inner voice. Feeling of your wish fulfilled is the secret. Go to bed with a positive thought. What thought you go to sleep with, that will create your outer world. You can also train your brain muscle first to master the moves of attention. Focus on the good things you experienced during the day. From the time you go to bed to the time you got out of bed in the morning. That will greatly help in developing the muscle of your attention. Your attention must be developed, controlled and concentrated in order to change your concept of yourself successfully and thereby change your future. Imagination is able to do anything, but only according to the internal direction of your attention. If you persist night after night, sooner or later, you will awaken in yourself a center of power and become conscious of your greater self, the real you. Attention 
is developed by repeated exercise or habit. Through habit, an action becomes easier, and so, in course of time, gives rise to a facility or faculty, which can then be put to higher uses. When you attain control of the internal direction of your attention, you will no longer stand in shallow water, but will launch out into the deep of life. You will walk in the assumption of the wish fulfilled, as on a foundation more solid, interference. You are free to choose the concept you will accept of yourself. Therefore, you possess the power of intervention, the power which enables you to alter the course of your future. The process of rising from your present concept to a higher concept of yourself is the means of all true progress. The higher concept is waiting for you to incarnate it in the world of experience. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory. Ephesians 3.20 Him that is able to do more than you can ask or think is your imagination, and the power that worketh in us is your attention. Understanding imagination to be him that is able to do all that you ask, and attention to be the power by which you create your world, you can now build your ideal world. Imagine yourself to be the ideal you dream of and desire. Remain attentive to this imagined state and as fast as you completely feel that you are already this ideal, it will manifest itself as reality in your world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. John 1.10 The mystery hid from the ages, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.26.27 The he in the first of these quotations is your imagination. As previously explained, there is only one substance. This substance is consciousness. It is your imagination which forms this substance into concepts, which concepts are then manifested as conditions, circumstances, and physical objects. Thus, imagination made your world. This supreme truth, with but few exceptions, man is not conscious of. The mystery, Christ in you, referred to in the second quotation, is your imagination by which your world is molded. The hope of glory is your awareness of the ability to rise perpetually to higher levels. Christ is not to be found in history nor in external forms. You find Christ only when you become aware of the fact that your imagination is the only redemptive power. When this is discovered, the towers of dogma will have heard the trumpets of truth and like the walls of Jericho, crumble to dust. Subjective control. Your imagination is able to do all that you ask in proportion to the degree of your attention. All progress, all fulfillment of desire depend upon the control and concentration of your attention. Attention may be either attracted from without or directed from within. Attention is attracted from without when you are consciously occupied with the external impressions of the immediate present. The very lines of this page are attracting your attention from without. Your attention is directed from within when you deliberately choose what you will be preoccupied with mentally. It is obvious that, in the objective world, your attention is not only attracted by, but is constantly directed to, external impressions. But your control in the subjective state is almost non-existent, for in this state, attention is usually the servant and not the master, the passenger and not the navigator of your world. There is an enormous difference between attention directed objectively and attention directed subjectively, and the capacity to change your future depends on the latter. 
When you are able to control the movements of your attention in the subjective world, you can modify or alter your life as you please. But this control cannot be achieved if you allow your attention to be attracted constantly from without. Each day, set yourself the task of deliberately withdrawing your attention from the objective world and of focusing it subjectively. In other words, concentrate on those thoughts or moods which you deliberately determine. Then those things that now restrict you will fade and drop away. The day you achieve control of the movements of your attention in the subjective world, you are master of your fate. You will no longer accept the dominance of outside conditions or circumstances. You will not accept life on the basis of the world without. Having achieved control of the movements of your attention and having discovered the mystery hid from the ages, that Christ in you is your imagination, you will assert the supremacy of imagination and put all things in subjection to it.